Welcome to Sustainable Packaging with Corey Connors. I'm really excited about my guest today. I've been trying to get them on the show for several months. Mr. Sean Zakin, who is the Chief Marketing Officer of Boomerang Water. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thanks. Thanks for having me, Corey. I totally love your company. What you guys are doing is fantastic. It's a throwback to an old system that I think is uh, very sustainable. And I can't wait to hear about it. So let's tell tell the audience about your background. How did you end up as CMO of this company? Sure. Okay. So I'm a storyteller by nature. <laughs> <laughs> I worked in entertainment, actually writing and producing television for the first 15 years or so of my career. Wow. Enjoyed it until uh, I didn't anymore and found that, you know, concentrating on strategic marketing and the creative strategy side of things for telling brand stories, for example, resonated with me more and I could still kind of do what I love and feel better about myself doing it. So that's what I've been doing for the past, you know, ever since. And I connected with Boomerang Water, actually the guys at the end of last year. So this is a fairly new relationship for me, but I'm really enjoying it so far. It's a really cool company. I'm excited to jump into, and that's neat that you came from the, the movie business. That's, yeah. a, that's a tough industry. A friend of mine is a producer and she's, she often tells me how difficult it is, but it, it is It's a, a long and winding road. I like to say <laughs> that it feels good getting into sustainability. It's like I've taken a shower from Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving back in a meaningful way. <laughs> in, in the water industry. Yeah, that yes. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so um, tell us about the concept. I don't want to leave the audience hanging for too long here. How does it work? This is a, you're a water company. You're sure. delivering in a unique way. Yeah. Explain it to us. So there are a couple of different sectors to our, our business. First and foremost, we're a business to business sale. We focus on large corporations with a closed environment. Anyone that basically can recover a bottle and get it back and put it back into our system. We're replacing single use plastic water bottles on site. Everything is done on site. So there's no distribution channel. You know, the, the distribution specifically when it comes to bottled water just doesn't make sense, right? You go typically to a source, the bottles are filled there, and then they are trucked and shipped and freighted all over the world. Our co-founder and CEO, Jason Dibble, came up with a much, much smarter, more efficient method, which was to do everything on site. So we take a system that is the size of, say, a commercial ice machine, and we deploy it on site, back of house. The system gets loaded with our single use but reusable bottles that are glass and or aluminum. They fill simultaneously. So wow. those empty bottles get loaded into the system. They're power washed. They're sanitized. They're filled with premium, pure, delicious, fresh water. And then they're capped and distributed all on site for single use. Now, single use is a little bit of a, a, a misnomer now because we're associating that with plastic, which is really bad. For us, it's intended to be single use for the end user. But as the genius part of this program, again, boomerang, what, comes, what goes out has to come back. Right. Those empty bottles are actually collected on site and loaded back into the system where you literally rinse and repeat indefinitely. So power wash, sanitize, fill again, and wow. distribute again and again and again. So no distribution that's offsite. There's no shipping of any of this. And so it's amazingly green and sustainable and makes a lot of sense. And saves a lot of sense. It sounds like I bet that's very fiscally responsible for a company too. It is, especially when you consider that, you know, a hotel, for example, hospitality industry is a really big deal for us. A hotel will pay for bottles of water. Yeah. They go out. And then even if ideally best case scenario, they get them back, they're still paying to then have these bottles hopefully recycled, which is, you know, not an insignificant part of the, the process. Worst case scenario, those bottles are going out into the trash and or winding up in landfills and waterways. So yeah. It is certainly more economical. As you can imagine, we sell that 
empty bottle once and then it's reused as many times in the system as they can you know facilitate on site as long as you can continue to recover that bottle get it back and load it back into our system that bottle becomes you know cents pennies fascinating and it, your bottles are beautiful and so Thank you. so uh, in both styles the glass and the aluminum that's what caught my eye on instagram was like whoa what is that that's <laughs> i've never seen that shape of a, of a glass bottle it's really cool i think you partnered with owens illinois we did for our glass bottles and then a uh, ball corporation for our aluminum bottles. And I should say, just because we're super proud of them, um, it's not as unique in the glass side of things to have the threading embedded in the substrate. So the vessel, obviously there's no plastic on this bottle, uh, but it is a much bigger deal on the aluminum side of things specifically we worked with the Ball Corporation for over a year to ensure that there was not going to be any plastic outsert on our bottles. So all of this is, it's with the aerosol division of, of Ball. So it's aluminum and there's no plastic on this bottle. So unfortunately, what we don't realize is oftentimes, you know, you'll buy a, and they're becoming way more popular, which is displacing plastic, that's great, but you'll see an aluminum, bottle of water with a plastic cap and a plastic outsert. And oftentimes we're told those bottles don't even get recycled because it's not worth the extra step of cutting off the top and the cap to actually do what you should with the bottle. So it's, it's a challenging time to try to get that word out that yeah. if you're talking about sustainability and you're really wanting to displace you know, single use plastic, let's make sure that there's no plastic in or on the bottle. That's a very innovative packaging design. Well done. That's yeah, thank you. Impressive. I'd love to take the credit for it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't. My partners, Jason Dibble and Jared Friend, who's, you know, co-founders and Jared's the CFO and the two of them have, you know, worked remarkably hard on that long before I came on board. And we've got a great small but mighty team in place that I should say is veteran owned, which we're really proud of. And thank that's a really terrific your, organization. Thank you. Thank them for their service for us, yeah, please. Yeah, absolutely. So I should, I should say the other side of our business, while, like I said, we're focused on this business to business play, trying to make the largest impact with, you know, hospitality industry is really big for us. Manufacturing, we're now, believe it or not, working with some of the largest mining, coal mining organizations in the Northeast, <laughs> again, because they're... <laughs> they're um, paying for a lot of single use plastic water bottles. And instead we're making them more sustainable and helping them with their you know, ESG policies. Looking to get into the military, which has, you know, makes a lot of sense to get into bases and, and camps where again, anything that's controllable, if people can get on site and leave on site without you know, th those bottles walking, that's where we're most effective. So putting that, to the side for a second, the other element of our business that's exciting and emerging is kind of a dealership franchise model that is local currently to where we're based in Davidson, North Carolina, which is about 20 minutes outside of Charlotte. We're currently offering a delivery and pickup subscription service for at home, small business, and even local retail in Mooresville, Huntersville, Cornelius, Davidson, the Lake Norman, Mecklenburg County area, if that means anything <laughs> to you. <laughs> it means something to, to someone. I, yes, absolutely. I, I had a message uh, last week from a woman in Italy who <laughs> said she truly enjoyed our podcast and <laughs> on, on the train from Milan. And I said, Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, Amazing. So you never know who's listening. Uh, right. And do you want to switch places? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> was there another seat with you? Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> so well, yes, that's very exciting. And that actually makes things a whole lot more accessible for folks who listen, you know, you try to do the right thing as a consumer. I think the word is out now that single use plastic water bottles are just irresponsible and certainly not sustainable anymore. And yet it's, you know, embarrassingly prevalent. I mean, I'm kind of a, a data head. In the US alone, we go through 75 
billion plastic water bottles every year. That's, that's mind boggling, right? I mean, the global bottled, market, bottled water market is expected to double still over the next 10 years. So that's, that, that's reaching over $400 billion a year. This is, this is an enormous industry that Big Beverage has kind of, you know, had their filthy paws on for quite some time. And it's, <laughs> you know, as you know, high time to really make things more localized and make them more centralized and not rely on that distribution channel. It's, that, that's the, the really painful part Specifically, like, you know, you look at a, a bottle of water, a tr traditional 500 ml plastic water bottle, you fill it up like a third of the way with oil, with fuel. That's how much gasoline it took to get that one bottle of water to you. Like, it, it still blows my mind thinking about that, right? Oh, I haven't heard that statistic. That's, that's, a, big, that's a big number. It big, is. A big amount of fuel. Yeah. Well, the fact that you guys came up with this system is totally incredible, unheard of in my in my career. I've never yep. heard of anybody doing this before. Very unique. Congratulations. Thank I you. Could, I could see it being used in stadiums. Absolutely. Uh, you know, if the Super Bowl coordinators are listening, let's have boomerang right. water there, huh? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Airports, I think you know, it, it breaks my heart every time you can't bring water into an airport, of course. So yeah. you're purchasing oftentimes single-use plastic water bottles. Wouldn't it be amazing if you could close loop that system where you could go to JFK, pick up a bottle of boomerang water, and then crack it open, enjoy it even on your flight, and return it in, you know, Charlotte's airport and <laughs> you know, close loop that system. It's, it's, it's on trend. Certainly it's very exciting seeing the discussions that we're having with large organizations that recognize it's time to change. It's time to be better. And I like to say we're an easy win. We, you know, you're familiar with ESG policies, environmental social governance is now a new expectation for these larger organizations. It's coming down from the federal government. You know, I'm getting in the weeds a little bit here, so I'll try to keep it entertaining. That's okay. Yeah, we're <laughs> um, uh, an educated group here. Yeah, we liked it. Great. Essentially, you are expected now as a large organization to share not only your profits and losses, right, uh, especially for publicly traded companies, but it, from investors to consumers to the government, we want to see and expect to see now what are you doing for the planet? What, how are you governing internally? How are you socializing within your organization? How are rules made? And so the E specifically in ESG is environmental and we are ESG made easy. It is as easy as, you know, an element of your environmental policies could be, hey, enough with your single use plastic water bottles and we've got a closed loop zero waste system to benefit you, your employees, and certainly your clientele. It's, I'm fascinated by the system. I didn't even know it was, it was this great. The fact that you've eliminated the, the shipping mm -hmm. is to me, the crown jewel in what you've done. It's absolutely, you know, I didn't even realize, I thought you would pick them up, go, no, go, no. go wash them, bring them back. And I thought that was great. So the fact that you're not even having, you've eliminated that is well done. Kudos yeah, to you. Th th thank you. Again, I I'd love to take credit for it. And I certainly love sharing that story. It is a remarkable new solution. The idea being that, you know, I I'm new to the, the water space, certainly. So it still kind of blows my mind that, you know, a certain bottle of water that we associate now with, high-end luxury hotels, for example, that actually comes from the South Pacific. That's where their, their water is being filled. And so I've never been to <laughs> Southeast Asia, for example. I see those bottles in hotels from New York City to California and you know everywhere in between, and they've come a long, long way. So it just doesn't make sense to do that anymore, right? Hundred percent. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to argue uh, against what you're saying. It's mm -hmm. uh, you know I'm not in a position to do that, but 
I'm sure someone will, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you've had detractors uh, on your social medias or whatever, but mm -hmm. I'd be fascinated to know a little bit more about the the bottles. How long do they last? How many turns do you think you can yeah. get? So we are currently testing that with, with Ball Corporation specifically because our aluminum bottles have just come off the line. It's important that I say and recognize that while these are reusable bottles, they're really not intended to be filled with anything else but our water. We're already getting questions about hot coffee and what that might do to you know, our BPA-free liner, for example. The, the system and our bottles have been built specifically for beautiful, fresh, purified water only. And as such, we've tested already that these bottles can go in through our system hundreds of times. Uh, of course, you know, it's important to say that with an asterisk, that is those bottles should be recovered after they were used. And we certainly couldn't be responsible for foreign objects that were placed in that that could compromise the integrity of the bottle. Right. However, we do have systems in place to test that and to ensure the health and quality of it's exciting. It's an, it's totally innovative. I'm, <laughs> I'm just like, this is the first for me to be kind of like, <laughs> wow, well done. You know, I mean, I've, I've had some great people on here, but this is, this is totally unique and totally cool. So I'm very, very impressed. I had a thought, could, yeah. could, could you do this with other things? Could you do this with sodas or, you know, eventually could you maybe have a juice line or something? You know what? The easy answer is I'm sure first and foremost, of course, we are a bottled water disruptive technology company. That said, if you start to peel back the layers a bit, you can realize that water is the primary ingredient in most liquids. So yes, certainly we're already down the road looking at flavored waters, at additives, probiotics, any health. Of course, you know, we're wanting to be as health focused and conscious as we can be because we are, you know, responsible that way and feel that that desire to do right by the earth, the environment, our consumer, of course. But yeah, there are lots of applications for, you know, being that on-site solution. It's got legs, as they say in the <laughs> advertising industry, studied advertising in college. And that's one of my favorite sayings. It's got mm -hmm. legs. It's mm -hmm. a, there's a lot of ways for this to go mm -hmm. in very positive ways. Totally. Listen, that's what's most exciting to me, even about this story as it unfolds. It's it's proven a really complicated puzzle. It's It's not a simple story to tell because... You can't, you can't point to other industries or other similar products and say, oh, okay, sure. so you get it. It's kind of like this, but it's not. It does that instead. It's, it's very unique. I mean, I was on the phone not long ago for a pitch with a large auto manufacturing group, uh, one of the largest actually. And the gentleman who's you know, for sure a decision maker looked at me and, on, on Zoom and said, so listen, this is fascinating. But at the end of the day, to be you know, fully transparent, we are looking at other sustainably focused bottles of water. So we understand plastic is bad. So it'll be Boomerang or maybe one of these other aluminum bottled water brands. And I said, well, respectfully, you know, totally understand and you know, all the power to you to, to make your own decision. But to be clear, if you're focused on sustainability, there is not a more sustainable bottle of water that we're aware of than ours. We are the most sustainable just because we, like I said, have cut out the distribution channel. So anything that you see on a shelf anywhere, anything that has a traditional distribution center that isn't being made on site is being trucked, you know, miles and miles and miles and we're not. So that makes us really competitive, which is exciting. It is exciting. I agree. I, I'm trying to think what else we could do this way. I think water and drinks are the only thing that I can think of right now. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe food someday. We'll figure out something. 
<laughs> well, like I said in the beginning of the, the podcast, this is expected to be an over $400 billion a year business in the next 10 years. I think there's plenty of room to just play in the beverage space for now. But yeah, I, I hope that the big beverage folks who were laughing as we were talking about, you know, cutting out these, these channels of, of distribution are now starting to shake in their boots a little bit and recognize that this disruptive technology is here to stay. It's on trend. And, you know, I think this is what consumers are looking for moving forward. At least I certainly hope so. Totally agree. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's not even a question of, should we be sustainable? It's okay. We have to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. How are we going to accomplish that together? And Absolutely. sustainable packaging is so important to that whole mix. You know, well done. Corey, I, I love that you said that. But the truth is, I do believe I've got faith. Listen, there are lots of doom and gloom numbers out there. <laughs> I, I take the rosier approach. I, I like to believe that we all really do, for the most part, want to be better. We want to do our part. We just want it to be easy. Right. So you know, you, you mentioned earlier, you thought, oh, I thought that y you had to return these bottles yourselves. The truth is that this has to be easy and we don't want to change the end user's experience at all. Let them for all intents and purposes believe this is a single use bottle for them and them alone. It's in a sustainable package and they can enjoy it and just leave it and we'll do the rest. We'll guarantee that because these bottles are going right back into our system, they won't wind up in a landfill or a waterway because we have a purpose right then and there for it. Because you need them. Yeah, right. they're valuable. That's, a, that's one of the things in Oregon where I live, we have mm -hmm. what's called the bottle drop. Mm -hmm. And we were, I think we were the first state to put a value on cans and bottles. Mm -hmm. And Oregon and Maine, I think we're the first two. But I, I can't tell you the last time I saw a bottle of anything on the side of the road because those get picked up. They That's get amazing, you know, 10 cents a piece now. They're valuable. Sure. So, that adds up. Definitely. Will you put a deposit on your bottles or will you give any incentive for? We haven't yet, but really, you know, this is quickly evolving. I, I love the idea of eventually breaking into college and university campuses that are for all intents and purposes, large closed loop you know, groups as well, or I should say controllable environments. As a result, I mean, how cool would it be to be able to raise money for your, a charity of your choice or a cause or a, a show that you're putting up, a sports team? You know, unfortunately, Big Beverage has got their claws in every organization I've come across so far that, you know, they've got big lengthy contracts with, Coke and Pepsi, for example, to provide only their, you know, water services among food and beverage. Those contracts do expire at times. They are renegotiated at times. And hopefully as we grow, we'll be able to be even more competitive in that space. But yeah, wouldn't it be great to, to put a monetary value and incentivize students to even to more selfishly benefit from collecting you and your buddies bottles of water and recovering them to put them back into a system so that they do have a monetary value. I'll connect you with my friend, Aaron Tucker over at uh, Michigan State University. He runs, the, I'd love uh, it. he's one of the, the leaders of the packaging school there. Great. And uh, they would totally be interested in something like this. I bet maybe they could be the first, you know, how, how appropriate to have a packaging school be the Amen. first, the you're, first you're... college. That's right. Uh, that uh, has the most sustainable bottles around. That's I great. should say we've we've had good fortune working with students from Davidson College over last year. In fact, we just hired our intern from <laughs> last spring. So shout out to Davidson College. They have already expressed interest in wanting to be better. They do have a contract that is running down, and you know we'll be sure to 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 watch that. But in the meantime. No one needs to, to champion and be the first. It, it's just get on board and join the, you know, the sustainable revolution, if you will. Would you co-brand them? Would you? Would you... Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Yes, our bottles are, are 
definitely customizable. In fact, I have a bottle here. Your listeners can't, can't uh, see it, but this is one example of a special program that we ran for Earth Day this past year. We ran a contest with all of the local K through 12 students in the schools in Davidson. And we had uh, an artist pick a winner. And this is actually a Davidson Fresh bottle designed by an 11th grader. And awesome. we have 2,500 bottles of beautiful, you know, this beautiful design that were put out and are still now in circulation specifically in her hometown of Davidson. What an honor. And, and she'll have that on her resume for yeah. the rest of her life. Yeah. What a, what a cool, cool thing. Yeah, right. I love it. <laughs> so how do we get on board? How do we get a hold of you guys? So our business to business local uh, focus is just boomerangwater.com. Our Instagram is get boomerangwater. And our local subscription for anyone that's in the Lake Norman, Mecklenburg County, Davidson, Mooresville, Cornelius, Huntersville area, they can go to getboomerangwater.com. Great. Well, thank you so much, Sean. I really appreciate it. I'd like to thank Landsberg Aurora for your sponsorship and continued support of this podcast. To the listeners, please take a minute to review and share this with your friends. We really appreciate it so we can make some more great episodes of Sustainable Packaging with Corey Connors. Thank you, Sean. Thanks so much, Corey.